We've got the half uh, or the dunker wires and going tonight. I'm just uh, heating up some water. We're just about coming to. Oh, we're just about up there now. Just uh, going to heat it to 154 initially, and then go up to 156. So it's not going to drop. Only a couple of a couple of Fahrenheit on when I put the grains in the grains tonight. Lovely grain bag. Yeah, Oof, yeah, lots of wheat in there. So what we've got is uh, it's American white wheat, 10 pound, uh, six pound. We've got some German Munich two, 10 ounces, two pound of Pilsner, German, two pounds of dark Munich, and then four ounces of a carafe for three, and then a half a pound of Skagit, no that's not Skagit, that's um, chocolate wheat, or, yeah chocolate wheat just to give it a bit more colour, because the recipe called for six pound of dark German wheat, we couldn't get that so I just put in white wheat and then I'm going to substitute, uh, substitute with a half a pound of the chocolate to get the colour in there, and it's a wheat, chocolate wheat, not chocolate malt. Um, we've got Halitel, I haven't got Halitel, I'm using uh, Mount Hood, ounce and a half, and I'm going to put that in for the full boil, boil of uh, 60 minutes, mash of 60 minutes. <clears throat> this is a boiling bag, this is my new, uh, new bag. It's not bad, it's a spring loaded bag, so I'll put that in there and mash it up. Okay, so we've got uh, got the mash basket in there and the bag in there. Um, what I've been using now, I've been using um, just normal distilled water um, or RO water, reverse osmosis water, and in it I've been putting um, the additives, the, the water additives, and, and this one's a great one I found, it made a great taste uh, difference to um, two batches a Blue Moon I did just recently, one Blue Moon, um, completely different taste, smell, um, crisp, um, it just fresh, it, it uh, made a great difference, so I've been using it um, on all my brews, and th you can see that, I see that's all the ingredients that are in there, it's one of these packs per five gallons of water and it depends on what you use on this is going to be a wheat with the with the um hefeweizen so um i use and it's eight and a half gallons in here um so i'll use a packet and a half um and believe it at that and that just goes in at the start of the mash and then also um the ph i'm using uh the pH stabilizer, I'll check the pH anyway, but I just use the uh, 5.2 and this is uh, one tablespoon per five gallons. So I'll use a tablespoon and a half and I'll check it. This isn't going to be a high pH anyway. And uh, and there we go. And now in with the uh, in with the grain. This might be hard to do and film. So I'll put it in, give it a stir. Okay, we're mashed back. in. We're going for... Um, we're going for uh, one... 54, 155, 155, pretty good, it doesn't happen that easy very often. Okay, so uh, so we're hooked up here, what we'll do now is we'll put the lid on, and this has got the new attachment on the lid um, for the recirculator. So what we do is we um, turn the handle, and start the recirculation just like that hopefully it's working in here yeah it's working so what okay. we do is I turn that I've got a rolling boil going it's uh it's on two so it's but look at the color of that beautiful dunkel we and um so we've got our helps going in now it's uh just the 60 minute um and that's the only hop addition on this one 60 minute i'll probably actually run at 70 with the wheat 70 minute boil. Um, we're sitting right right on eight gallons. Um, so 70 minute boil, we'll get that down to six and a half gallons where we need it. 
Uh, only thing I've got left to go, actually the only addition I've got is some yeast nutrient, I'll put that in a little bit to go, I'm not going to put a wealth block tablet in, because I'm going to bottle this one because I want the yeast in the bottle. That's the, uh, that's the grain, I'll just empty the bag out into another bag and I'll put this one down into the compost. Um, a lot of people make bread and stuff out of that, I, I don't bother with that. Uh, now is the time to start to sanitise everything I'm going to need to ferment it. <clears throat> and um, yeasty out of the fridge now as well, so I'm going to use the organic step and yeast. It's hard to see there on that. Um, but yeah, it's a, oh there it is there on that one. <laughs> idiot, you idiot. Stefan, so I'm going for a banana bomb in this one, um, and this is the yeast that will do it for me. So, looking forward to that too. Right on. Oh, right. Got the uh, chiller in there, chilling it down as we speak. Get this thing down quick, I hope, so we can uh, get in the fermenter. Uh, you know. While the ball's on, obviously, get everything uh, sanitised, ready to go. It's the best time to do it. Um, already cleaned the basket out. It cleans really well. The stainless steel is amazing stuff. Um, I like it better than the aluminum or aluminium or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I get these things just keep leaking. I just changed the the plastic over to the silicon. Yeah, it's still leaking a little bit. Just, I don't know, just uh, maybe I'll have to rip out some money and buy a good one, but uh, everything else seems to be going right, but yeah, it's leaking, it just bothers me. Um, yeah, I just, it's, it's amazing how much those pallets expand. There's a, an ounce and a half there of the um, Mount Hood, but God, so much uh, expansion from when you put it in there. It's amazing that I, I just use a bag, I don't like to see all that stuff in in the work. The, you know, you've got all your protein and stuff that's going to be slinging around in there anyway um, so I don't like to see any more let's see how we ended up with the volume so three four five gallons um, so we've got five gallons there six gallons five gallons six gallons so we end up with six gallons I don't want the. Is it six gallons? Five gallons. Six gallons, yep, six gallons. Okay, good. Six gallons of beer. Lovely. Well, we wanted it. Okay, so I'll uh, finish chilling this down and I'll put it in the carboy and I'll be so, back. So, uh, all's finished. Got to cool down, ready to go <clears throat> into, uh, into the carboy. So, it's just a matter of. Uh, Connecting the hoses, and sanitise the course. Still a bit of foam in the carboy, but that's uh, quite alright. And I usually uh, just put a chock under the back end, up to about there, and then just uh, open it up slowly, and in it goes. I uh, get my yeast, yeasties out of the fridge, ready to go, these Imperial um, organic yeast cans, great, amazing, 2 billion, usually uh, if you're like 6 gallons, I'm led to believe you don't need to make a starter, these ones are going to be coping good enough, and you store cold and open cold, so you don't uh, warm it at all like other yeasts, and don't shake it. You just would uh, lightly crack it to make the carbonation go out. If you shake it up, you get too much CO2 in them and they're likely to get a bit of a gusher. You definitely want a gusher, so you just crack it and leave it until you're ready to uh, pitch it straight in there. Um, that's filling up beautiful. I've got six gallons in there, so I'm going to run a big blow off tube out the top into uh, probably a gallon, actually I'll probably just use the rest of this uh, 
this container and seal it up a little bit so it's got a big blow up because I'd say it's going to uh, it's going to be pretty active fer fermentation. Okay, ten hours after uh, we pitched the yeast, there's other side there. See the movement in there? It's very dark. It's great. You got some really good colour off it. Chocolate wheat in the Cara three, and she's bubbling away. I've got a blow off tube on it, so I figure it's going to be pretty full on. The croissant is starting to rise. 72, 74 degrees. See how it goes. All right, about 20 hours after I put it in this container, Croizen, she's off full over. The blowover valve is gone. This thing is going off. It's great. Very vigorous fermentation. Still running at high 74s, 76s. Going for a banana. Okay, bomb. so we've uh, been in the primary fermenter for uh, 10 days. Um, fermenting's pretty much stopped at this stage. Uh, you always get a few bubbles when you jiggle it up, and now I'm putting it into the secondary. Um, beautiful colour from it. It's uh, very clear too, which is nice. Okay, just got uh, got uh, two dozen bottles. And then I'm just filling the keg now, probably get a half a keg as well, just siphoning it out, um, re really nice and clear, came out beautifully and clear. Um, so fill the keg up, probably halfway, we'll get a half a keg out of it, and uh, a couple of dozen bottles to share around, so that's the best part of home brewing, sharing what you've made, and uh, having a bit of fun with it, so and that's nearly empty now. It's good, it's going to be a bit in that keg, that's great. And now all I've got to do is just bottle them and uh, move on to the next brew, which is Mac and Jack. Uh, I'll hit you uh, at tasting okay. time. Okay, here we go. So this is uh, the Dunkel Weeson. Uh, she's all chilled down. It's been in the keg uh, conditioning for a week in a few days, I suppose. So let's give her a pour. Got the gas set up at uh, 12%. Um, Typically, this is a heady beer. Let's give it a taste and see what it tastes like. Very smooth. Very reserved on the hops, which is good. Malty, it's pretty malty. I'm not sure if it's the dark side of the chocolatey or caram more caramely i think it's a little bit chocolatey for my liking dunkle weasons uh, typically caramely not a lot of taste very smooth on the the finish a little bit of banana a little bit of spicy peppery clove um, wow really mellow mellow beer um, beautiful color to it um, it's got a nice head on it. It's very carbonated. Um, I think if I made it again, I'd go for uh, the more caramel mold. I wouldn't use a Skagit dark. I'd use a, um, a Cara 40 or something like that. Crystal 40. Very nice though. Very easy to drink over winter. It's going to be a great fall beer. Let's call it a fall lawnmower beer. Till next time.